Are we rolling? Yeah. Oh, that rocks. What, are we doing this in rectangle? Everybody's still shooting everything in rectangle. <laughs> Give me a circle. Let's see that. You know that lenses are circular, right? Here's an intro music. Boom, boom, ba, bit the boop, ba, boom, boom, ba, bit the boop, ba, Yellowstone, bit the boop, ba, Yellowstone, bit the boop, ba, recap show. You know what it is. It's Welcome to the Yellowstone, episode three. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your clicks. Thanks for your kindness. Thanks for your engagement. Just thanks for being here on this journey with us, this crazy journey called life. Dang. I feel very lucky. Um, while we're at it, let's talk about your favorite show and mine, a little show called Yellowstone. I'm Jefferson White, I play Jimmy on Yellowstone, and I'm also uh, Yellowstone's biggest fan. Um, and uh, if you're here watching the third episode of this, you probably watched episodes one and two, so you know how it works a little bit by now. We're gonna talk about Yellowstone episode 103, called No Good Horses. Uh, we're gonna chop it up, we're gonna get under the hood if you're a car person. We're gonna um, dig into it if you're like a shovel person. We're gonna chop it up if you're like a sushi chef. There's something for everybody here if you're one of those three jobs. If you're any other job, you're out of luck, you're in the wrong place. I'm just kidding. No matter what your job is, today your only job is to have a good time, you know? We undervalue our own pleasure and we overvalue the time we spent being productive. Not today. Today we're just hanging out, having a great time. Yellowstone, episode 103, No Good Horses. This is a uh, staggeringly good episode with some of my favorite scenes of the entire series. So it's gonna be painful to try to only describe it in five minutes, but um, that's what the producers tell me we've got to do. I fought for seven minutes. I fought like a wolf. I fought like a goddamn bear. What's a good fighting animal? I fought like a fucking shark to get seven minutes. They wouldn't do it. They said, hell no, Jeff. Five if you're lucky. Um, so here we go, five minutes, Yellowstone episode 103, No Good Horses. So we open for the first time on a flashback. We see, we meet for the first time John Dutton's wife, Evelyn Dutton, played by Gretchen Maul. Incredible actor, I've been a fan of hers for years, so that was very exciting for me. Um, and we, we see Evelyn Dutton and the young Beth and young Casey on a ride out in the countryside. Now, there's some early foreshadowing um, we already know that Beth doesn't like horses. She, uh, I think she says in the first episodes, I don't get anywhere near those fucking things, and we're about to figure out why. So on this casual ride in the countryside, um, Evelyn Dutton, her horse rears up, she falls off and then is crushed underneath the horse and very badly hurt, and she sends Beth to go get JD to come and, uh, and rescue her. Beth rides off, but isn't a great rider, is afraid of horses, is terrified, is traumatized by seeing her mother so badly injured, and, um, and doesn't get to JD in time. Young Casey Dutton stays with his mother as she, as she passes away and fights off um, coyotes using a pocket knife, which is primo Casey, <laughs> which is like classic Casey, um, fighting off some coyotes, fighting against insurmountable odds to protect what he loves, Classic Casey. Beth runs to get JD, uh, a young John Dutton, played by Josh Lucas, another incredible actor. This was a very exciting flashback for me as a fan of the show. Um, and by the time they get back, it's too late. Evelyn Dutton has passed away, um, which is a sort of defining tragedy that will um, haunt these characters, Beth, Jamie, JD, Casey, for the rest of their lives. Um, in episode 103, much later, spoiler alert, John Dutton says uh, that when his wife died, his family died. Um, so this is, a, it's a defining tragedy for them. I have written in my notes, it just says, FORMATIVE TRAGEDY in all caps. So you know it's a big deal. Um, and then we, in, back in the present day, we see uh, John Dutton uh, sort of having an intimate relationship with Governor Perry. We've known that they were allies, and this sort of solidifies the fact that they're sleeping together 
Um, but this is a particularly hard thing for JD today because this is the anniversary of his wife's passing. And the fact that it's the anniversary of Evelyn Dutton's passing is going to inform a lot of what happens in this episode. So Beth is contending with that. And this is an episode, it's the episode where Beth sort of iconically climbs into the trough and sort of takes a bath in the trough. Um, and Jane, every, everybody says to her, what the fuck are you doing? What's going on? And Beth has the incredible line, everyone suffers today. Everyone suffers today. It's the anniversary of her mom's passing and um, she's so full of pain that she takes it out on everyone around her throughout this whole episode. So this is also an episode in which um, Casey Dutton is driving along with Tate and they come across a van on the res. Casey's immediately suspicious. It's sort of a sketchy scenario. And he finds that there's a, a woman kidnapped who's in the back of the van. And the, uh, the kidnappers attack Casey to try to cover up the evidence and Casey kills them both. This is also, as he goes to do this, as he goes to try to rescue this woman, he leaves Tate behind. And Tate has the encounter with the rattlesnake in the, uh, in the drainage pipe. So it's another instance in which to protect his family or like fight for what he believes in, Casey leaves his family in tremendous danger, which is a sort of recurring motive with Casey too. No matter where he goes, no matter what decision he makes, his family is still put at risk. He can't protect everything that he wants at the same time. I have a minute left, and I think we've covered about 45 seconds of this episode so far. Um, so also, this is an episode where Rainwater is arrested for stealing the cows, basically. John Dutton, the livestock commissioner, has Rainwater arrested for, uh, for stealing the cows that have wandered onto the res territory. So Rainwater goes to jail, um, and John Dutton comes to see him in jail, and they have one of my all-time favorite scenes because those actors, Gil Birmingham and Kevin the man Costner are both so good. That scene is so incredible. And it's the first time that these two guys have really sort of, the, the nature of their conflict has changed. And uh, JD goes to see Rainwater in jail and they sort of have it out and it's incredible. Um, da, 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 da. There's a lot, so I'm scrolling through my notes very quickly. Beth is on this mission to um, destroy Dan Jenkins. <laughs> Poor Dan Jenkins is in so over his head. So Beth goes to the, uh, the, the bar that he hangs out at and basically begins her long form mission to ruin his life. And in doing so, gets very drunk and then needs a ride home. And the only person available to pick her up is Jamie. So there's another one of my all time favorite Yellowstone scenes. I won't tell the producers it's been five minutes if you don't. Be cool, they're right there. So Jamie and Beth in an explosive scene. And he, I think it's amazing because every conflict is sort of being redefined in the context of this tragedy that happened to them when they were children. So this everything about their mother, this sort of shared trauma that they had as children um, is sort of, uh, is bubbling up on this day, on the day of um, the, the anniversary of their, their mother's death. And then, holy shit, this is an episode, Jimmy, Jimmy, if you wanna just, let's check in on Jimmy. Hey, what's going on with Jimmy? Uh, Jimmy has his first scene with Kevin Costner. He encounters Kevin Costner in the barn as Kevin is sort of processing his relationship to this, this tragedy that happened so long ago on this day. Jimmy encounters him and Kevin asks Jimmy about his family and we learn that, um, all of Jimmy's family is dead or in jail with the exception of his grandfather. Um, and Jimmy says, you know, my, my grandpa says that my family died when his wife passed and, and Kevin says that it's the, the same for the Duttons, that um, the family died when Evelyn passed. It's just taking it longer to, to sort of finally give up. Um, which is really, you learn that it's sort of been clear that there's a lot of sadness in this family, that there's a lot of trauma, that there's something going on. And then learning about Evelyn's passing is a huge part of like really informs all that information. And then towards the end of this episode, um, Samantha Long, the widow of Robert Long, who Casey killed in the first episode, Monica's brother, commits suicide. And um, Casey and, and Monica and uh, Sam stands alone all sort of have to deal with this loss in this community because there's a number of children there. So there's this sort of heartbreaking scene where Casey is face to face with the children, basically his nephews and nieces of um, Sam and Robert Long. He killed Robert Long. And it just shows how like every little act of violence ripples out and has a sort of butterfly effect and affects whole communities. Um, and then this is also towards the end of this episode. So Casey, you know, violence finds him, manages to, to hunt him down wherever he goes. Towards the end of this episode, the bodies that Casey buried on the res, the kidnappers, 
are um, stumbled upon by uh, by land developers hoping to to build on the res. So all of this violence, all of these sort of threads of trauma, are keep sort of being dug up symbolically and literally in the case of these bodies. They literally get dug up, not just symbolically. That's episode 103, No Good Horses. Let's talk about some of our favorite things. So, episode MVP. Let me do a big title here. Episode MVP. Episode MVP. Put some reverb on my voice for that, please. Don't let me look like a fool. Um, Episode MVP of this episode, it's definitely a tie between Beth and Jamie. That's two heavy hitters in their prime at the top of their game. That's a spectacular scene. So the MVP, that's a Beth-Jamie combo. My grandmother's favorite line of the episode. We'll do a title. It says, my my grandma's favorite line. My grandmother's favorite line of the episode is, um, hit your sister again, I'll put your head through the fucking wall. My grandma loves all the cursing on the show. That's her favorite part. She always says, hey, Jeff, could you see you, you try to get them to curse more? She loves that shit. Um, okay, fun Easter egg. Easter egg. Easter. <laughs> Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Can we say Easter? Is Easter trademarked? I don't think so. Does Viacom own Easter? No, I think Jesus does. We do, right? We own Easter. Yeah, but we own Jesus for sure, right? <laughs> it's a Viacom CBS. Yes, we own Easter. Here's a fun Easter egg. <laughs> Easter egg. Easter egg. Easter egg. Um, and as always, it's Jake Ream. So there's a flashback in this episode to 20 years before. And, uh, you know, you got Josh Lucas playing a young JD. Everybody's younger. But I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong, I'm pretty sure Jake Ream is in that flashback scene, and he's still exactly the same age. (laughs) It's hard to see. It's just for, like, a frame. So that could be called an Easter egg or a continuity error, not to dunk on our uh, production team. (laughs) And it's possible it's not him. I just, I think it's him. There's a lot of, it's a little bit, Jake Green's a little bit of a Where's Waldo situation where there's lots of guys with cowboy hats, there's lots of guys with beards, but I think that that's the real Waldo. I think it's Jake Ream in that flashback. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. And if I'm right, I'm also sorry. There's also a fun Easter egg um, when Casey is burying the bodies of the kidnappers that he, uh, that he murdered and he's burying them on the res. One of the guys helping him is Pete Sands. And Pete Sands is an incredible musician who's worked on Yellowstone in, in many different ways. Check him out on Facebook and Instagram, Pete Sands. Um, he's an incredible musician. Check him out. Check him out. Check him out. Maybe we'll do a graphic. Check him out. It'll be a fun graphic to do. Jeff says, check him out. Um, and then as we go along, we're also tracking Jimmy's bodily injuries. Jimmy's bodily injuries. I'm really making a lot of work for the graphics team. In this one, Jimmy doesn't get physically hurt, but he has a sort of emotional pain when he talks to John Dutton about his family. There's like an emotional injury associated with that. It's maybe the, it's the first episode in which Jimmy doesn't get physically hurt, but it, you, there's a lot of different ways to get hurt is also a theme of this episode and of Yellowstone as a whole maybe. And then my favorite guest star, Jefferson's favorite guest star, is Gretchen Maul. Gretchen Maul's incredible. Boardwalk Empire. I saw her in a play called uh, Disgraced on Broadway that was fucking amazing. Um, she's an amazing actor. I was so delighted when I saw that she was on our, on our little show. Boardwalk Empire. You guys watch that? Okay. Yellowstone, episode 103, A Little In Memoriam. We're pouring one out. We're pouring out a little cold brew for um, cold brew with almond milk. For, uh, for the characters that have uh, departed. So in 103, they're not so fun. You got Evelyn Dutton. The loss of Evelyn Dutton is a defining trauma that has hunted the, hunt, haunted the, uh, the Dutton clan ever since. You got the two kidnappers on the reservation that Casey kills, uh, which also like, in addition to an in-memoriam session, you could also have like a Casey's body count as a different thing, because he's, he's racking them up. Um, and then also uh, Samantha Long at the end of the episode. Pour one out. Let's hear some questions from the fans. All right. Uh, First up, we've got Randy Kleinhans. Um, He wants to know, when you're not filming Yellowstone, what do you enjoy doing? Wow, thank you, Randy. That's a very thoughtful question. I have a lot of hobbies. I play ping pong um, pretty seriously. I've fallen off a little bit at late because I've had a hip injury from too much running and sitting, which is like a very funny... (laughs) 
I ran long distance too much and I sat too much. And that combination of things has really fucked up my hip joints. Um, but I play a lot of ping pong. I'm really into photography. I have a sort of complicated and fraught relationship with video games that I'm, I'm working out. Um, I watch a lot of movies. Uh, boy, other fun stuff. I sit, hang out with my friends. You know, I, I live in New York, very far away from my family. So my like chosen family, my community is very, very important to me out here. So I try to spend a lot of time with those friends and uh, making the most of the, the time we have together while I'm in the city and not uh, working out on location. Thanks, Randy. That's a very thoughtful question. Um, Heather Gaskew wants to know what your first acting gig was and how old you were. Oh, man. My first acting gig was in third grade. It was a play called Food Wars that was a bit of like a punny play on Star Wars that my third grade class did. And I played Dark Chocolate. That was like Darth Vader. Dark chocolate. What was the, the Luke Skywalker? Oh, I wish. I remember there was split P3O. <laughs> I know. And I, this isn't me. This is the playwright who wrote Food Wars. And at that, at that age, in third grade, Star Wars was very important to me. So it was a formative experience. Um, you know? That's the, that's the sequels we really deserve. You know? Give us a whole other trilogy. Um, that was my first. Uh, that was my first acting gig. I used to do a lot of puppet shows with my mom. My mom is a, is a. She's a librarian. She's a public librarian in Lisbon, Iowa. But she's also an incredible puppeteer, and she's a playwright. So she would write these puppet shows that we would perform. So those were also early acting experiences. All right, Susanna Fa wants to know what else you've acted in. Um. Thanks for asking, Susanna. I've acted in a bunch of, mostly done a lot of TV over the past five or six years since I moved to New York. I uh, did a show called The Americans on FX, which was like a really cool sort of Soviet, like Cold War era drama. Um, very, very good acting and writing. Really brilliant show. I did a show that I loved very much called Manhattan that aired on WGN America about the Manhattan Project during, uh, during World War II, in which I played a character whose nickname was Iowa. He was from Iowa. So that was a, an early sort of formative experience. Um, I did How to Get Away with Murder on, uh, on ABC. Look, asking me what else I've acted in is just basically an advertisement for a bunch of other TV shows that <laughs> Viacom doesn't own. So it's an edgy, edgy question. Um, I've acted in a bunch of stuff. You know, um, I, I, had, I did an episode of the new Twilight Zone, the CBS uh, All Access Twilight Zone reboot. That was like a real recent high point for me because I've loved Twilight Zone since I was a kid. We and um, now. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and that's all in the family now. That was working with um, DeWanda Wise and Jessica Williams, a really, really talented Jonathan Whitesell. And uh, it was like a really, really talented cast and a director who I love named Jakob Verbruggen, who's an incredibly talented Dutch director who we now worked together four times. We did House of Cards and then The Alienist on TNT and then Twilight Zone. And then we just did a new Apple show called Ray James. So that was like a real pleasure to work on. Um, yeah, did a little movie that shot in Texas last year called No Future, a really amazing indie, uh, little indie movie, brilliant script by these two filmmakers from Austin, Texas. That was really fun. And I make a lot of my own, uh, digital sketch comedy. Okay, next up, Cassie Jean Hacking wants to know if you have a favorite horse on set. Is it your horse? That's really, that's, that's a difficult question because I don't want to play favorites because I have to go to work with all those guys. You know what I mean? That's like I'm asking me who my favorite actor on the show is. Whoever I don't say is going to be mad at me and it's the same with the horses. Um, I have a lot of affinity for a horse named Boone. There's a horse named Blue Jeans that I, they're all horses that are very patient with me and very kind to me as I, you know, it's like I, ostensibly I'm supposed to tell the horse what to do, but for the most part, the horse sort of tells me what to do and takes care of me. So I'm very, very grateful to those sweet, sweet horses. Thanks, guys. And the last one we have for today is Alinda. And um, the note says, no question, just want to say that Jimmy is one of my favorite characters on the show. Thanks. That's really nice. Thank you. Our fans are the best. Our fans are the best. Wow. Dang, I feel so lucky. Thank you. That's very kind of you. I feel the same way. We do have to the best fans in the world, so thank you.
Um, you want to take it to some voicemails? Yeah, let's do some voice. I want to take it. I'm not doing this because you told me to, Bria. <laughs> this was your idea? I want to take it to some voicemails. Hey, who's in charge here? Not me. Hey, who? Yeah, exactly. We'll take it to some voicemails when I feel like it, which is now. Perfect. <laughs> Amazing. So we put up a voicemail inbox. Folks can call in, leave questions. I haven't heard these before. We're going to listen to them for the first time right now. Here we go. Play. Hey, uh, my name is Daniel. Uh, one of my favorite season one moments was when Jimmy was getting his ass handed to him by Fred, but you kept getting up to fight, and then Rip came back to help you out. So that was a pretty cool scene, kind of a big brother, little brother type of moment. Um, other than that, I mean, oh, and then when you got distracted by the trout and Rip told you to shut the fuck up, priceless. Um, Instagram's dflow99. Um, underscore between D and flow. So, yeah. Uh, you guys are great. Love the show. Keep up the good work, man. Awesome. Thanks, Daniel. That rules, man. Those are some of my favorite scenes, too. Uh, that fight was fucking exhausting. We didn't use any stunt performers for that fight, so that was me and Luke Peckinpah, who uh, plays Fred, who's, like, the nicest guy in the world in real life. And I was, like... I wore the jacket, this sort of like Sherpa jean jacket in that scene. I swear to you, for the rest of the season, I was like finding dust in pockets of that jacket because <laughs> that was a, a long day of getting my ass kicked. Um, great. Let's listen to another one. Thanks, Daniel. Jefferson, hey, I'm a prior Army Ranger here, man. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, the show, being able to show that uh, anybody can change and uh, sometimes, sometimes it just takes some life-changing elements to that um, really spoke out to me. Uh, If you could, give me a call. Three, two, three, a bunch of my uh, buddies here. Uh, My ranch would love to talk to you. Oh, fuck yeah, that rules, man. That that means a lot to me. Thank you so much. I think it it is, yeah, Jimmy's journey as a guy who didn't see a way forward for himself, I think, didn't really understand how to improve his circumstances or how he could change in a meaningful way and felt very stuck in his circumstances. And it really just took this one opportunity for him to, um, to change his life, you know, in a, in a fundamental way. Thanks, bro. Thank you so much. Cool. That's all the, the voicemails for today. Paramount Network's Yellowstone, massively popular television program, truly a breakaway breakout hit. Now, it's been it's really changed my life. It's been the sort of defining experience of my professional career. I live in New York City. Um, I have a bunch of roommates. We are all a part of, a, of an arts community. We all support each other's work. We all value each other's work very much. We go see each other's stuff. We listen to each other's music. It's very important to be part of a mutually supportive creative community as an artist. That said, none of my roommates or close, close uh, personal friends have ever watched Yellowstone. So we thought it might be fun. We're gonna play a little trivia game. I'm gonna call up my roommates. We're gonna talk a little bit about their lives and the ways in which I've engaged with their creative lives. And then we're gonna ask them some very, very simple questions about Yellowstone. And we're gonna see how they do. And the winner will officially, legally become my new best friend. Welcome to a the game show called The Search for Jefferson's New Best Friend. Um. So let's call, the first person we're gonna call is my uh, my sort of kind of the reigning champion in terms of being my best friend. Uh, this guy's name is Ben Vigas. We've been friends for about seven years. Ben and I met doing a uh, an actor training program in Louisville, Kentucky. Ben is from Seattle. He went to um, Wesleyan University. He's an incredibly talented actor. He's an incredibly talented sound designer, writer. Just dialing his number here. So Ben and I have been friends for for about seven years. We started a small production company together. He's been a sort of creative partner and and dear friend to me for a long time. Most of the, the work he does now is with a company called Pie Hole. It's a very cool sort of indie theater company in New York. Some of my all-time favorite plays were uh, plays that Piehole devised and, and worked on. So, so getting to know that company through Ben has also been an incredible gift. Um, yeah, Ben's a dear, dear close friend who, whose work I uh, support very well. Let's see uh, how much he knows about a little television program called Yellowstone.
Hello? Hey, Ben, it's your friend Jeff. Oh, hey, what's up? Not much, man. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. I was just talking to you. So you're live on air. Well, not live. Oh, great. It's the internet. You're in the, you're in the future, the internet sometime down the line once they're done editing this thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh, um, great. And I was talking a little bit about our relationship. You know, we've been friends, I think, for about seven years. We met in 2012, so I guess eight years 2012. now? 2012. Yeah, wow, eight years. Yeah. Not eight years. It'll, be eight, it'll be eight years in, like, July or August. That's right. So I guess we're on, like, seven and a half. So, I, you, you know, the whole time I've been working on Yellowstone, I started working on Yellowstone in about 2017. Um, and we were living together mm-hmm. when I started working on Yellowstone, so I was sort of coming in and out of town um, to work on Yellowstone. So we're just going to play a really quick little trivia game. Um, I've got five questions for you that are related to Yellowstone, and then we're going to oh, we're going to do a sort of bracket. Um, and the winner, that the one of my friends that is most familiar with Yellowstone, will legally speaking become my new best friend. Great. And it, there's, it's all the, the paperwork is drawn of up. How much we have or haven't watched Yellowstone? Yeah. So, you, and which end of that spectrum are you on? Uh, I would say I'm not at the very bottom of that spectrum, but I would say I'm certainly not the most, uh, Yellowstone versed. So with some of these questions are easier and some of them are harder. So we'll, we'll start with the easiest question. Ready? Sure. Okay. What is Kevin Costner's character's name on the show? Something Dutton. <laughs> Boy. Um, <laughs> okay. That was the easy first softball. Uh, this is about to get messy. Um, what's Kevin yeah. Costner's youngest son's name? Uh, uh, do, uh, do you want me to say a, say a name or just say, I don't know. Yeah, it's an, that's answer enough. Um, what yeah. is Kevin Costner's grandson's name? Uh, uh, yeah. Marcus. <laughs> Dang, how do, you're very lucky that you got that one. Um, okay, yeah. here's, here's one for you. This is maybe a return to, to a little bit easier. Now, what is my character's full name, first and last? Jimmy. Well, once you get branded, it's got to be Dutton. You're Jimmy Dutton. Once the, once the brand happens, right, then you're in the... Yeah, well, you and you're familiar with the branding, so that is, I mean, that's a that's something about the show. That's true. Yes, I'm familiar with the branding as I a know phenomenon. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I knew your first name. Yeah. So between my character and Kevin's name, character, you know an entire name. You know a first least, name and a last name, at least one name. At least, or or two people who go by, you know, two Madonnas. Yeah, exactly. Two one-named people, like Beyonce Two or Madonna. Two one-named people, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so that was most of the questions. Um, <laughs> and you've really, you've really you know, done well for yourself. Um, there, then at this point, there's supposed to be harder questions. I've got another question that is more difficult that I might as well just ask. What is... You might as well humiliate yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. What is Kevin Costner's father's name on the show? Uh, no, if this no, helps you at all, it it's... It, Kevin Costner's character is a junior. See, so I had a feeling that that was the case. Yeah. But it's hard because you don't even I know. Thinking, yeah. I was thinking, well, this will be so easy. It's just the senior of Kevin Costner's character. But wow. God, his name is on the tip of my tongue and it's, uh, it's, it's staying there. Yeah. If it, I mean, I think the real consolation prize here is that um, the show's many, many viewers are going to feel really smart and well informed when they hear um, when they hear your <laughs> your answers to or these just, questions, or just resentful, <laughs> resentful of your of your friends. Yeah. Um, well, thanks, man. This was this this is very fun, and you you know no matter what I, you are I, my, my you're my dear friend no matter what you're my dear friend no matter what also and uh you know i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> that's okay man you support me in a lot of other very meaningful ways i think your pictures are beautiful wow you have no idea how well that's playing in this room 
Everyone knew that, oh, that <laughs> in this room, everybody lit up a little bit. Thanks, man. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Ben. All right. Thanks. Let, me know, let me know how the bracket shakes. I will. Hey, uh, spoiler, okay, not well. Amazing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode three of Welcome to the Yellowstone. Uh, we're having a blast. We're figuring it out. We're having a great time. And once again, I just want to say thank you for your questions. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, thanks for being the best fucking fans in the world. Um, you rock. Make sure you follow us on, uh, you can follow Yellowstone on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Make sure you follow the Paramount Network on YouTube. Follow uh, Yellowstone on TikTok. I'm just, every time I'm fucking with these guys, there's no TikTok. There's not a TikTok, but I'm trying to get them to get a TikTok. I'm not trying to make more work for you guys. I know you have to maintain like a ton of accounts. All I'm saying is... Long ones. That's all I'm saying. Bye. Have a good night. Or day. I don't know. Whenever you're watching this, bye is the point. <laughs>